the banquet year God that you have chosen sinners to come and congregate that we may tell the world of the renewing power of your blood. We thank you, Father, that through this same mercy and grace you have sent us to go and bring others to you, to tell them the good news of your God who pardons, the God who upholds and renews. Our prayer, Father, that as we discuss today, that you may speak to your children, that not everything that will be said, sung, or thought may bring us closer to you. Prepare us for that great day when you shall come to take your children home. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
have our opening song and uh, I request uh, the chorister. Our opening song is entitled Call to the Feast. Call to the Feast. Good morning. 
morning, afternoon, in your presence. We are before you, that may you speak personally to each and every one of us, Father, that as we leave this place, may we not live the same, but having been transformed by your grace and your love, Father in heaven. Glorious Father, you've chosen to us, your son, to speak to us. I pray that may you give him the words to speak to us, Father. Let them be words that come only from you, Father. May you take full possession of our lives a hundred percent that we actually obey you and do your will as it is in your Son, Jesus Christ, Father in heaven. Father, speak to each one of us that we, as we tread through this Christian journey, we may find joy, not in this world, but the joy that you prepare for us in the world to come, Father. Even when we are still here, we can still enjoy the joy that we find in doing your will and in being in your presence continuously, Father in heaven. May you speak to us. Convict, convict us, Father. Father, we pray this. That thanks for hearing our prayer and answering it. For our prayer, trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is that this day, eh? as it is this day. I have a problem with the time, but you go to me. At this time, I'll call the deacon and the deaconesses to offer the prayer. I'll call the deacon and the deaconesses to pray. Let's have our to pray. Holy, holy, most precious God and healing. Thank you for this day. Been working throughout the week. I ask if you are coming. It is not bad to live. Amen. Amen. The church choir will present.
neuronal.
any moment and you may say wrong words, something may happen in these moments, please pray for me. Uh, to say the least, I am happy to be here. Amen. Amen. There are so many people that I am happy to see that when I was sitting down, I didn't know where to start. I got to start with Elder Booker, then I saw Elder Singh, but Elder Singh had talked to him. I saw Adrian and seen Mama. I told him if I had his hair, I would have a bath like the bath. <laughs> but I have this one. Let us pray before we begin. Dear God, I want to thank you that you have chosen a sinner to speak to your children. I admit and confess that I am not worthy of this privilege that you have given me. Nevertheless, Father, I pray that I may disappear and you appear. I pray in a special way, Father, that the words that I will speak will come from your throne. That God, it will be you who will speak to your children. The words that I will speak, Father, if they are mine with humanity, I pray forgive me. I also pray in a special way, Father, that you may keep the ears of your children. That, Lord, you may plow the soils of their hearts. That the word that you, you will pass through me will be like sea upon what I have grown. But then I also pray for myself that, Lord, you may speak to me, that I may be converted by the message. I also pray, especially, Father, for the online viewers and those who will watch or listen to this recording in the future, that, Lord, the same spirit that works effectually now will continue on until the time when this message usefulness will be done that your children will be going to heaven. I pray, Lord, that you may give me clarity of speech, that you may give your children attention and focus, that by the time I'm done, your name will be glorified. Amen. 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 That part is done. Okay. I want to say I'm happy again to see all the first year students. I believe yours has been the best choir. Elder, correct me if I'm wrong. Eh? This is the best precious choir that we have had. Amen. And I want to thank God for all of you. I saw Christmas at that point. <laughs> I, I was shocked. I saw Angela. Someone is good here that looked like you. I don't know. But I saw Christmas, I am sure. Then I am happy to see Olara Moses seated at the back. My brother, this man. Those of you who are fresh, he's one of our, our presidents. I also, I saw Mutama somewhere. He's standing. Amen. Amen. Who else did I see? All you guys that I know you finished. Yes. The president of Moves and his vice, he's stand. Amen. He's our brethren from my sister association at Moves the BS. Right? And I'm happy to see the two of you here. Who else? The rest of you that I don't know by name, I'm sorry. Yeah? <laughs> As we go on, amen. Uh, Lodu, Albert, I'm shocked that you're still here, my brother. <laughs> I praise God. Now, before we begin, this is it's Sabbath, right? And I have approximately 12 minutes to finish. That's from the time I was given. Someone has said the name. <laughs> so, before I go on, I want my intention is not to show that you don't know the Bible. My intention is to help you go back and do what? And read. Canvas is your best time to memorize the scriptures. It's your best time to learn. It's the best time you have to reach out, to make true friends. Are we together? I beg you, utilize it. Those of you who are about to leave Canvas, you're coming to a world that does not forgive. You're coming to a world that doesn't wish you would. Are we together? Those who are still in campus and are just beginning, how I pray that you utilize every program that Muslim will give. All the fellowships, um, when we're still in campus, our fellowships will run from 7.30 to 9. And I can assure you that it is those fellowships that have helped me become the person that I am today. Because it, they, seem, they seem mundane, they seem you know, continue. Go to the same server every day, sometimes you'll see preachers be like that. Uh, you will meet other, other servants and you will play. No, other fellowships rather. And if you have a paper tomorrow, you know, you're supposed to be preparing, this is your future, and things of that nature. I can assure you, no single moment that you spend with God is wasted. Are we together? Because a time is going to come where everything you have learned you will be tested upon. I can assure you. Are we together? Now, without saying too much, I have one question. Actually, it's two questions. So 
Solomon had children. True or false? True or false? Who succeeded him? Rehoboam, right? My brother is anxious. Give me the answer. Amen. Here's the question. Solomon had two daughters that are mentioned in the Bible. I have 10,000 shillings for someone who gives me those two names. Brother, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say. But it is a good question. Knowing Solomon's daughter is not going to take you to heaven. Amen. <laughs> but if Solomon had daughters that you don't know and you're a Christian, then it is a challenge to you. Amen. So in my one minute of my time, who knows? Solomon had two daughters that are mentioned in the scriptures. Who knows? There is a hand. He made my sister. Yes. Oh, there's also senior government official. <laughs> Those who are Mr. You. That's the name you said. It. Let me take the lady. Yes, my sister. Best man and staff Amen. My sister, please come and pick it. I pray that all of us will be encouraged forward to study. My sister is walking shyly. But these are the blessings of the Lord when they are there. May the good Lord bless you. Now, our son. Luke chapter 6, verse 6. When Marvin called me and told me that I was presenting, the first question I asked, one of the questions I asked was, What is the theme? And the theme is Maranatha. And Maranatha is a word that is commonly thrown around in Adventist circles, isn't it? It is one of those words you will hear, Maranatha, because it's hard to get. Maranatha, you know, everyone gets excited. It appears once in the New Testament, as far as I know, right? Luke 6, verse 36. I have entitled my presentation, Perfection. And this is a very delicate topic. Why? Because the person speaking to you is not perfect. And he's speaking to imperfect people. So the question becomes, what are we even doing? Why is it an imperfect person speaking to imperfect people about perfection? Right? Sadly or shockingly, that is the standard the Bible requires of us. Actually, I think the Bible is what God requires of us. Are we together? So the question, the verse begins by telling us, be in the rapport what? Merciful. As your father also in heaven is merciful. Now, in the New Testament, or when you read the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, there are stories that are called parallel stories. Luke will write it, Matthew will write it, Mark will write it. Sometimes you have additional info, depending on which reader you're going through. Now we're going to read a parallel verse like this, and it is a common one. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Some of you can quote this on head, but I request to read it. Luke says, be in the rapport what? Mercy. Do you catch that? Luke says mercy. Let's look at Matthew 5.48. Be in the rapport what? Perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is what? It's perfect. So when we understand, when you get perfection here, and you read Luke where it says mercy, they are speaking about the same what? The same thing. Perfection that is being implied is not only refraining from sinning, but a step further whereby you are merciful as God is what? Is merciful. Now by the time we are done, you will realize that the mercy that God shows is a very high standard. Are you together? And he says that is the same requires of you. you. Before I go on further, I prepared something small for those who are taking notes. Every time that I present, I usually realize that as a human being, I am limited. And my presentation is only in scope of what I've been given as a topic. Right? Some of you are here, you have dates. Some of you are here, and broken. <laughs> Sorry for it. Some of you are here, and you're scared, you're worried, you have stress, and all those different things. Eh? Please note down the following verses. I'll read them quickly. Read them in your free time. And may God use them to console you. The first one is Psalm 90, verse 14. 
Psalm 90, verse 14. And the second one is Isaiah 44, verse 22. Isaiah 44, verse 22. Psalm 102, verse 1 to 2. Psalm 102, verse 1 to 2. Psalm 25, verse 17 and 18. Psalm 27, verse 1, 10 and 14. Psalm 27, verse 1, 10 and 14. Psalm 70, verse 4. Psalm 70, verse 4. Psalm 71, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 71, verse 1. Three. Now, back to Psalm that was the side notes. And now back. When the Bible speaks about perfection, when it speaks about us representing the image of Christ, many believers have harshly, rightly so, ended the discussion only at not sin. Are you together? When I say what is righteousness, what is holiness, what is perfection, most of the first thing that comes to your mind is what? Is what? Not sinning, right? When I say this person is perfect, the idea that comes to your head is that they don't do what? They don't sin. And that is okay, right? And that is correct. But it is not the whole story. When we speak about Bible perfection, we go a step further to realize something that Christ actually did more than we take time to notice. Question How many years was Christ on earth? How many of those years were in active ministry? Three and a half. What was Jesus doing for 30 years? He was chopping wood, isn't it? How many of us know the book, The Desire of Ages? You just know it, not read. Just know it. Those of you who don't know the book, talk to those who know it. So those who know, put up your hands high. Here is my challenge to you. When you read the Desire of Ages, you will find that there are things that Jesus did because he was an ordinary, everyday human being, whereby they actually set him apart from everyone else in the way. Are we together? You can't be a thief for 30 years, you know? then come and tell us about not stealing, yet you're still a thief. Are we together? There's credibility you don't have. So for 30 years, Jesus proves by his life that he's the kind of man is going to speak about the next three and a half. Right here. It is why in the book of John he, has, he tells the, the Pharisees, who of you can do what? Can convict me of sin. What else are you find in the scriptures? How many people convict him of sin? Not even one. You know what that means? In a life of 30 years, how many people here yeah, are above that? Right? So those of those of you who are below 20. Then they have one. How many of those who are below 25 haven't seen? Someone looks at me and is like, let's get it from I just look at my single person and laugh. Now, if, if you in under 25 years you have seen and you tell them not to do sins, how hard must it have been for Christ who was that? And at 30 sentences, no one of you can do what? Convict you of sin. Sin in the sense that he is not a sinner, but is that where his life ended? Is the question you want to give this today. I will read both from the Bible and from the Spirit of Prophecy. Uh, those of you who don't know what that is, the writings of Sister Way. Those of you who don't have access to them, please reach out rather waste you. Yes. I know you are. If he doesn't have if he has you, uh, let us see, Mama Karen. Right? Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, I pay you some of those books. I cannot find them on my brain. Just type in your book and attach PDF to it. This is what we read in Christ's object lessons, page 69, paragraph 1. It says, When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to play them as his own. I repeat that. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly 
reproduce in his people. Then he will do what? He will come to Christ. Same thing. Question. Jesus said he's coming back soon. And some people have said he was grand. Those who are critics, they feel like 2,000 years is not soon. So this guy either had a challenge or something. But you, who is the son of the Adventist, and believe by the truth, why has Jesus not come back yet? He's still preparing the mansion, this isn't his Yeah? He wants us to turn back to him. Whose fault is it that Christ hasn't come back? Some of us even hear great answer. Whose fault is it that Christ hasn't come back? It is my fault. As you sit here, all of you, I can't go to the hill itself. Amen? You come to church. That is a, that's a milestone. Amen? But now that you've come, this is what I want you to hear. It is partially your fault that Christ hasn't come back. If Jesus were to come back today, how many of you would have all your friends make it together? Okay, that is too, too high a standard. How many of us have warned our friends? Our thoughts are with him, 
and our sweetest thoughts are with Him. All we have and are is consecrated to Him. We long to bear His image, breathe His spirit, do His will, and please Him in all things. This is taken from steps of Christ. That's one book. In other words, we are told that if you want to ask yourself practically, am I really a Christian? You ask yourself, who has your hand? Who has your affection? Many of us only open our Bibles or discuss Bible things then. Here. So, this is the time some of you are eating spirit. And after 30 minutes, some of you goes. Right? Others, the Bible, you will open it because someone has. There are people who have their Bibles there, and they will only open it when they are struck. <laughs> and there are some believers who open their Bibles to win and There's nothing wrong with you reading your Bible without answers. I wish it is wrong when that is the motivation of why you're Christian. Let me continue on. Turn to first Peter, rather second Peter chapter one. We are discussing the issue of affection and highlighting the fact that it is gospel to be in church but still not be of what I equally highlighted the fact that it is very possible for us to think or to limit only not sin. Are we together thus far? Now let us add this. Now let us now to observe. Second Peter chapter 1, we we'll begin in verse 5. And beside this, give me all diligence, add to your faith virtue. I want you to notice the characters he's mentioned. Are we together? Notice each one that is being mentioned. And I want you to highlight whether it is a sin or the lifestyle. Are we together? That's what I want to highlight. One, and besides this, giving all diligence and add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Some persons will put it as love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Question to you, is this everyday life or is it just you? You understand my question? Let me, let me rephrase it. The things that are being mentioned there, are they things you just read and you're done? Or is it something you actually have to put into practice every day? Something you put into practice, isn't it? We are not going to look at you and be like, this guy has virtue. You understand? We must see it when someone steps on your well polished shoe. Suffer. And instead of slapping there, man, it's like, it's my brother, you And you feel your own shoe. That is a very basic example. The most serious example would be we come to church. And an elderly person doesn't have where to sit. And for you came and amen. <laughs> and this elderly person has come what? Late. And you look at them and you're thinking, this is the problem. <laughs> Don't come man. <laughs> Some people will sit and pay attention to someone. Someone else will be like, how can I sit and know that that's what stands? Elder, please come and do what? Whether it's a good and a child, whether it's an age, pregnant mothers, or if it's a taxi. Some of you have, it's cafe, even now in those cafe days, you have people whereby it's the last taxi. <laughs> yeah? It's the last taxi. There's a woman with her child. They also want the same taxi, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, I need to be in campus, I'm going to go to school, and I'm a student, and I'm good at this. You leave the mother there with that child, eh? God, will, God will figure out something for her. <laughs> There's no person that tells you to leave, leave your seat in the taxi for this woman. You understand? Eh? These are things that we start seeing in your what? In your everyday life. Let me keep your attention there. Turn me to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26. Brother, let's begin at 16. I'm trying to rush because time is not on my side. I really want to cover what I prepared for today, so please bear with me. Matthew 19, we'll be in verse 16. We're going to read a passage that is 
it's an everyday person. Right? We're not looking at so many new things today, it's an everyday person, right? Back in 19, we're doing verse 16. If you're there, say amen. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. <coughs> so this is the introduction. When I'm coming to Christmas, I get it. My good brother. I have already entered this good grace and said it. When I say, My good brother, when I'm coming to Christmas, I have already biased you in a certain direction. So this guy begins by telling Christ, Good master, they have what? Eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is good. This was good. Did Jesus die? Now, these are some of the questions you're going to find in the field. Eh? You meet a Muslim brother and he tell you, even Jesus himself said he's not good. <laughs> it is in your Bible, read it. Read the book of the verse. You read it. So I have read it for you. I must say, did Jesus die? There was silence in the church. <laughs> in Jesus' time. So how do we explain this? The rich young ruler, as we shall later find out in this description, comes to Christ with a way of bias in him. Are we together? He wants to begin by caressing Christ's ego so that he may give him the answer he wants to do what? To hear. The question would be, did he call him good because he was convinced of his character or he called him good because he wanted to bias him? wanted to buy us more together. It is on that basis that Christ tells that there is only one, one person who is good. Are you together? Not that he is denying that he, he has no sin, because it later kills people. <coughs> who convicts me of what? Of sin. We continue on. The rich young ruler says that Christ has said and says, but if thou will enter into life, Christ is giving you the solution, isn't it? I need to follow with me. Keep the commandments. How many of you are you confused if you don't know which commandment he's talking about? A classic Adventist understands which commandments he's talking about, isn't it? So in an Adventist mind, eh, we have already started with the first four, isn't it? And in the first four, there is only one that comes out most. Which one is that one? Supper. So in my, in my Adventist mind, eh, I'm like, oh. you get it? Eh? Notice the next. He said that to him, which? He didn't ask this because he was ignorant. He asked because he wanted to confirm. Are you together? But I want to ask the wisdom that is in the answer that Christ gives. He says this. Jesus said unto him, not his which commandments, right? In your Adventist mind, with the exception of our sister, in your Adventist mind, eh? the ten commandments, now start ticking. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor thyself. Question, which commandment did he leave out? Which part of the commandment is he quoting? The last word, the last six. So which one did he leave out? No, no, I'm saying among the six, which one do you think he has left out? In Adventist mind. Thou shalt not covet, isn't it? You have not read anything like thou shalt not covet. Now let us look at that last part critically. Covet is wanting everything for who? For myself, isn't it? So it says, thou shalt, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So he still presents the same commandment, but in a different manner. Are you together? I want you to understand the question the rich young ruler asked. What good thing shall I do to inherit what? Eternal life. Christ tells him keep the what? The commandments. And he goes ahead and quote which ones? The last six. Are you together? My question for you, why? Christ could have begun with the first four, isn't it? Because when the lawyer, I shall have that when the lawyer comes to him and asks him which is the greatest commandment, Christ tells him how read is thou? And tells him it is highlights them out together. So the question is, why does Christ choose the last six and not the first four? Yes? In other words, it brings out the 
other side of perfection whereby your profession is put to the test. It is easy to sit here and say we are Adventists. It is very easy for us to come here dressed well, put it together, because it's Sabbath and preferably Azum is going to look at you and say, my sister, this is not Adventist. Are you together? So it's easy to come on Sabbath, well dressed and ready for us to, um, to praise your goodness. Are you together? You was, when was the last time any of you saw me? Very long time ago, is it? I'll show you that I've been Christian. No one is sure, is it? Actually, it is only by faith that you have allowed me to stand here. Right here, because if, if, if we all agree with the first statement I made that I am an imperfect person speaking to perfect people, I don't have justifiable reason to go and stand here outside the presence of Christ. But back to my question. If Christ quotes the last six as the reason that helps you enter life, it means that we need to consider perfection in a new light. Not actually new, but to also add another dimension to how we understand perfection. Are you together? Not only as stopping to sin, but also acts of mass. Now we are going to finalize our verses in the following passage. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Verse 25 42. The story is of the Samaritan. The good Samaritan and the leader. How you feel? The Israelites. Amen. Now, those of you who have read, who have done some research, the parables that Jesus gives never only have one meaning. How you feel? It's never just a simple there and there. They have a broader meaning in the context of the great controversy. How you so when we read the passage of the Good Separation, look at it on a cosmic scale. Something wider, something bigger. Are we together? We begin with the Good Samaritan, verse 25. It reads, And behold, a certain lawyer, again, highlighting what? Who is the lawyer in this context? It's an Old Testament student of the law. Are we together? When you read the New Testament, where it says that a lawyer, when you read the lawyer came and asked him, they are not asking to learn. They are asking to find fault. Are you together? Most likely it was sent by the Pharisees to trick him in his answers. Because remember, Jesus did not study in their schools. Hmm? So someone has come to test him. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him. Did he ask to learn? Did he ask knowing the answer? Did he ask this question knowing the answer? Yes, he knew the answer. Because if you're tempting someone to make a mistake, it means you know what is what is right. And, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Is this the same question that the rich young ruler asked? It's the same, isn't it? Meaning that the answer that Jesus gives on the one side, this one should be studied at the same time. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? Jesus points the question back at him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Christ says, And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Christ used the guy to ask his own question. But this guy was not satisfied. So he asked the next question. Because he had been sent, and he didn't prove that he was worth it. Like when your reputation is at stake, sometimes you will stop arguing because you're right, you just start arguing to prove a point. Those of you who are Adventists, this is special for you. We have been in an argument, instead of the dead, for example. You know what the Bible teaches. No, no, no. You have heard about what the Bible teaches. Right together. You have seen strong elders and brothers speak about it and sisters, and you're like, yes, the Bible says the dead are what? Are dead. Then they ask you, prove it. And you realize you don't actually have the what? The verses. And this brother is giving the story of, the story of Lazarus. You don't have an answer. 
giving you the souls that you are saved in the earth. Okay. Then they give you another one where they tell you that the soul of someone came back into him. I don't know if you have read that story of Elisha when he resurrects the boy. It says that, and his soul did what? Came back to him. I tell you to go back and read it. Eh? You, you will be interested in what it says. They are pointing all those verses at you. Is that like a story? Yeah, 
had come to him. Doesn't that make you ask yourself what kind of man he was? And there are four of the trendy phrases, I may not know it, but the idea is whatever concerns you, do it. Let me also live my life. I went to get, uh, there's, there's two symbols. <laughs> that yesterday. I didn't know what the system there was. Those of you who don't know, will find out. You don't need to know it. Point is, how many of your friends, if you were more loving, if you cared more about them, if you took time to tell someone, I am praying for you? You know what it means when, when you meet someone random in your class? I feel like, I pray for you last night. How many of you have had someone tell you that? You didn't ask them to pray for you, but the person just tells you, I did what? I prayed for you. Do you know how soothing that feels? But how much time does it take to pray? Those Christians, once they say, let us kneel and pray. Dear Lord, help us. Because we are going to be kneeling on stones, eh? this sister or brother is going to pray. I'm sure they pray. And I was still in one of the churches. I told that true prayer or the, and the prayer that gets to God is yeah? so when I can pray and the spot starts hunting me because you've been scolding for long. <laughs> your, your mouth is tired, you know, then you start breathing a certain way. There you know the prayer is going. Because certain brother told us, funny, I get it. Some prayers don't go above the roof. So now when I think about, about it, like, the prayers you see, you get that. It has to go up and explore. Which is there, you stay here. You understand my question? My statement. Point is, many of us here have missed the simple things we can do. And you want to go and say, I'm waiting to do the big ones. Right? The, on just the block that you stay in campus or in your place of residence, how many of them have just woken up and said, God loves you? You know how much stress is in the world? Right? You know people are living with. Someone is called in the morning, your mother was beaten in the city. And I sit there. Then you buy bus again. You're coming to church. And of course it is not wrong. Yeah? The Bible is in hand, walking with it. But no one has heard you say about God's love from the time you left home. They feel like that, that, that person who stays there is a precious. Go together. I am saying this not because. I have affected everything I am telling you, but I tell you this because I have to realize that people do not, are not so much interested in how much facts you have amassed. People are more interested in how much God they see in you. When you read the book of Acts, there is a lady who was resurrected. But when lady was resurrected, it is not the apostles who looked for her. It is people who went to the apostles and told them, come and do what? And pray for this woman. Who is that woman? Dorcas. Right together. Read that story. The Bible tells us that it is people who went to the apostles and told them, This woman has been a good word. A good woman. They are not ready to lose her. Help God to ask God to bring her what? Bring her back. How many of you have died now? <laughs> <laughs> These are hard questions, but very few. Even to the younger ones, they age. Right together. Because these things do not end, or they don't start in the You cultivate it from that stage, and in this stage of effect. Unfortunately, for most of us, because Netflix and uh, Korean movies and media movies and yeah, so popular and, and the teachers we have, yeah, your life is looking this way, and what is saying look this way, you're confused. So you have one foot this side and one foot this way. And then you play. Like, I think it's this Bible is also like. You make it seem like no one has ever understood them in the arts history. Yeah. It's only it's that all of us are going to be we are going to have a meaning. No, it is not. Let me task you with this question. When you read Revelation 20, maybe before you read it, a majority of the people on earth who have ever lived until Jesus is second coming, a majority are going to heaven or hell. I am not to judge, this is a Bible fact of observation, you get it. All the redeemed, in the Revelation of the all the redeemed fit in the city. Now it is true that city is big, but it's a deep shock 
that from Adam to the last person who will be saved can fit in one city. And the next person, you know, the next person is really tell us. And the rest of the wicked covered the breadth of the earth. They were as the sands of the sea. Which it doesn't say about the righteous people. So where are the majority going? Is it because God is not that? Is it because heaven is small? So I can look at you like look at the dimensions of the city. It's only good to hold a billion people. They are simple quite exact that much. They will tell you that city by its dimensions cannot hold more than seven billion. So the number of people going to heaven won't do it in advance. He built the city knowing. And for you, even if you try, you don't bring one. You will not go. There are people who have said that in China. Are you together? But the question is are they not going because God did not want them to go? Or are they not going because they refuse to do what they did? Let me give you a little bit of the principle behind affection. When man sinned, initially it wasn't just, we were not created just not sinning. But the principle of love was put <coughs> what? From the heart. Whereby the other came before me. How many of us here have this life principle whereby it is the other who comes before you? How many of you are in school because you want to study graduate and then start helping the world around you? Or how many of you are in school because it is my future? You need to work hard to be done. It is free, it is your future. And then you're the property of God. That is what the Bible tells you. So you're his property in church. The question is, how profitable are you as his property? Let me read you a few quotes and then we shall call it a close because it's lunchtime. And these are very delicate hours. <laughs> Someone can look at you and be like, you have understood the point. <laughs> Paul carried with him 
the atmosphere of heaven. What does that mean? How do you create the atmosphere of heaven? Is it light? Is it a smell or a perfume that you carry with you? Paul carried with him the atmosphere of heaven. All who associated with him felt the influence of his union with Christ. Must, must feel that. All who did what? Who associated with him felt the influence of his union with Christ. How many have been that in your life? I may have today I told you pray for people, write small cheats and fold them and throw them under the door. Hmm? You know like how we do when you're serving those players, you go to do it. Those poster members who are a bit older and you remember those days. So you go to the door and you knock on the door, no one answers them. Then you get your flyer, you slide it under the door. You know, like, yeah, well, maybe you see the flyer, you know what? Come from the summit. I continue on. The fact that his own life exemplified the truth he proclaimed, gave convincing power to his preaching. Here lies the power of the truth. Many of us have focused on knowing the truth, but not letting the truth transform us. Do you realize that there are people who are in church, who hate the church because of it? Hmm? There are some people who will not come to church, at least in the first year of because an Adventist did something bad to them. There are some people who are slowly but sure and leaving the church because of you who is in church. There are others who hate the church because they have seen you and how you live. There was one time a uh, sister gave us a testimony at Mount Rose. She said, This was very bad. She said, Her and her friend, her and another Adventist friend went to the petrol station. Her time was flat. So this guy has worked with himself, isn't it? So this little Adventist friend tells her, tip him, give him something, you know, as a thank you. Then the sister says, you don't pay him something. <laughs> now, we can go into the, the complexities of the theology behind her, her answer, okay, to be like, it was like this and then like this. But the fact that she came for the pressure, and did do it herself, allow someone else to do it, doesn't have the courtesy, it doesn't show the courtesy in the mind of this person to go ahead and do this. Hmm? She says it is on that day that was the last time this brother gave us anything about Adventism. She didn't give us the story proudly. She gave it to us, we are having a similar discussion about perfection in terms of being loving and loving. Do not, please do not go out of this discussion and say, I said it's not reading, spiritual prophecy. In Revelation of Daniel, stop studying here. Eh? Just focus on being nice. <laughs> okay. All I'm saying is don't stop at doing that. The unstudied, unconscious people must break down these things. You know that you can wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to go to which morning? In Canvas cell, room 54, room 12, and level 3. And whoever are going to find there will give them 100,000. You have a purpose to do that, isn't it? Compare that with someone who is walking along the street. And then you meet, again, it's for the question, the same people on the street because they are lazy. Okay? And then there are sisters that show you walking down the street and then someone sees the woman's bag and then she says, all her transport money was inside the day. You know? You sit down to it takes you about 4,000 shillings to come back with one move on that side. And then she tells you, I'm going to follow, I don't know why you can, but please help me. But if you give her that money, you're going to go You're going to foot, <laughs> and you're hungry, and thirsty, and it's hot. All the conditions necessary going to say, Sister, may God bless you. <laughs> when you go this side, I feel like, dear God, I've left like you what? <laughs> then you give her your 4,000. Now, some of us are like this. This is a true story. You meet a lady, and she starts crying, I'm going to buy those things. I was going back to apply for internship, which I never 
avoid. You know those things, you just have an application in the way. So, then I'm going to buy earnings to cash from here. I'm going to buy it. Then I'm going to just give it to thousand. Then it's just, then it's two thousand. It's eight to ten. It's big. It's a big one. But I knew that my transport had worked. So I was like, I know this journey is somewhere. I'm going to walk a distance of how much? I was like, I was going to struggle days. Eh? The shoe. But there are some things that I don't know for long distance. Brothers, you understand me. There are some shoes you wear, and that shoe is not for long distance. Like when you walk, eh? your heels will hurt, your toes will. You know those things that come on the side. Eh? By the time you're done with that journey, you're going to be like, you get it. So I'm like, no. I start telling myself, God is merciful. God has seen my act. God is going to help me pick money. I'm honest. That is how I went to town then. So I go to Kampala and walk. First, first walk from Ginger Road to Munam. Those of you who understand that journey. All this while I'm asking, did I make a mistake? You understand? My, my motivation for helping was like, I have helped God is going to do what? And me, I also did a training that God was going to help me pass. When you help, when you, when you do, do it because it is good. Do it because someone else is going to be happy and they will praise God. Praise God. Don't do it because it is, it is something you have prayed. Some of you are good because it is the rule. That is a bad thing. Be good because it is the right thing to do. Do good without expecting anything. Speak to someone. Do you know brothers and sisters in church eh, who are not ready to be around? We are looking at money. Brothers and sisters are looking at money. Many of us are in church, and we know that there are people in church who are actually saved good. In church. Am I wrong or right? It is, a, it is not new that in our Baptist churches, even in local congregations, it is a well known fact that. A visitor can come on Sabbath. When? On Sabbath, our best day. The day of rest and gladness. Amen. And come on the day of rest and gladness and sit. And people have lunch. Someone will be like, get in the ship, let's just ask one who's talking about all the people who have been going Then you come and walk by your bed with food. After you've done that, you go back to your prince. She stays there, she says, what? Morning. And you know she's a visitor, maybe she has come with her own problems. I wish we he has come with his own problems. And just because I want to talk to you. But then there's nothing more extending that extra arm. How are you, my brother? How are you, my sister? Are you new? Some like, no, I'm not new. Some visitors who are budget, just to respect the right. Some visitors are in the Some of the house of our pioneers, I think by grace. 
recipe. I read that book. I was like, I am going to cram. I cram this for going for next time. I was like, this boy is not go. He never showed up. Now, when I went inside them, I'll give you a testimony. They knew, they knew the truth. But sadly, none of them was what? But argument, even when unanswerable, may provoke only the opposition. But a godly example has a power that it is impossible wholly to resist. Do you want to preach? You over here. Do you want to preach? Do you want to bring souls to Christ? Along with your equipping yourself mentally or intellectually, ask God to make you love him. Ask God to show you where He wants you to work. And you'll be shocked where He tell you to work. Tell God, dear God, make me harm. Because I'm sloping to God. After class, I have tucked in, I have ironed. And then the guy carrying a sack of chap invites you to go in there. Those of you who know how big those sacks be. And then God will make sure he starts to go out of the way. the spirit is the house. <laughs> But I have just prayed, I have just asked you that I really want to, I was sincere, okay? And God shows where he wants you to be and you be like, eh? As the guy passed me, the spirit was like, that guy needs help. Don't you see that he needs help? Like, <laughs> can't you just, can, can someone fall down and I pick them? You know, those, those better things to help me. That time he passed, I, I stopped that he'll feel guilty. Then someone else comes another time. Because when you refuse the test the first time, it will come back again. The conditions will be different, the test will be higher, and you will be the same place all together. For a time. Same place, same road, near the same time. I'm working with two sisters from class. Same condition. I am ironed, smart, and I'm going to their place to discuss. As I'm going down, this time, another guy. Still with the bicycle, it's coming up. I saw him in advance. Hey, when the spirit will give you something you don't want to do, it. there's where the heart starts beating. You always finish. It is, it is hard to mistake. You always bump. The heart starts beating. But for you, don't come down this place. No one happened. And I'm going to lose swag pushing a guy with the bicycle as a photo of us and people say, and you're pushing him up the hill. The spirit is like, help the man. He needs what? I'm not telling you this to blow my trumpet. I hope you understand the person of life paint at you. That God will show you that the work you want to do, or the person who needs your help, is not far. They're just next to you. Right together. That neighbor, that person, that teacher, that lecturer needs the word of help of this. Well, prayer from who? From you. Right together. Finally, true character is not shaped from outside. True character is not put on, it radiates from within. If you wish to direct others in the path of righteousness, the principles of righteousness must be enshrined in our hearts. Our profession of faith may proclaim the theory of religion. What? The theory of religion. Which of us are over that we do good, be nice, be together? How many of us are hearing new things for the first time in the that you didn't know that you're supposed to be? But how many of us are good? You get my point? You come to church and want to hear that you knew someone that is going to harm you well for the whole week. And you ignore doing the very basic things that you know you should do what you should be doing. In Jamaica, I started a church called Seventh-day Adventist Church called um, Lost His Sight. He gave blind. So how does the blind person work? Work for you? He goes by a busy junction, the town. How you have one in there? Or go around about time. And he would always ask his guy, leave me here. And he repeated the same words from morning to evening. I am praying for all pregnant mothers that you may have a safe delivery. This is the message of the Seventh Adventist Church. God loves you. And he repeats the same message. He repeats this until evening. In the evening he's taken home. In the morning he comes back. Are you together? We are told that he did that for approximately up to 20 years. Every day. It got to a point where pregnant mothers would travel distances 
to come and just have this guy say that as their pastor. And they all gave a testimony. They all had safe deliverance. Amen. It so happened that that street was named after him, Jamaica today. And finally, the strongest Adventism in the world is found where? In Jamaica. An elder simply did what? Praying for pregnant mothers. How many of you can pray for pregnant mothers? You need, you need a theology class. So that you train you how to pray for pregnant mothers. That's just a basic example altogether. And they say that all the children, the majority of them who were born in that period, came to the church. Either were dedicated to the church or in their later life came to the church. That elder will never see the people who convert until he gets to what? Heaven. You who has eyes, who is in campus, who is healthy, you can't help a pregnant mother. You can't help the neighbor with some of your food. You are like, I have a bunch of my food. If I run out of the water, it is true. Let's be honest. Eh? Time to give, you get to go. But it is okay. Because it is better to do good, right? Together, than to just go about telling people how to do good and not be interested. Our professional faith may proclaim the spirit of religion, but it is our practical faith that holds to the one and truth. The consistent life, holy conversation, the unswerving integrity, the active, benevolent spirit, the godly example, these are the mediums through which light is conveyed to the world. How I pray that in addition to your reading the scriptures, in addition to your quoting the language, in addition to country living, in addition to Dress to come, which is necessary. Amen. Should be good, right? In addition to eating right, don't eat meat, don't do this, you know, those things, eh? they are not wrong. Some people say, like, it is fanaticism, blah, blah, blah. But some people who are practicing it, some of us who are practicing it are happy. Don't know about you, you're happy. You get it. And when, when someone asks me, why don't you eat meat? I'm not certain to say, <laughs> those who don't eat meat will not be translated inside those places. That what is there. Are you together? That is not how I begin. Are you together? A hypertensive person reaches out to you and they feel like, should I give you some tea? You're like, no, 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 don't take tea. If I drink it, don't have tea, but it's okay, I'll just take more water. For those of you who are like, come over and say, give me one more tea. Are you together? Then you turn away. You see, as an Adventist, I don't take these things, it is a sin to take things. <laughs> yeah, some of us were like that. Now it is true. We are not supposed to do that. I don't care. But if that is your motivation, then you have missed the mark. I don't care. It is an entry where you decide by telling this person, you see, your God is the devil. Not with this thing of life. I don't care. The problem we don't have time. You have 30 minutes. <laughs> so, that, so that now they pull out your, your, your classic Adventist guide, and then you start. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter 6. <laughs> your body was bought by the blood of Jesus. Is that true? Yes. But that is not the way to do what? Okay. Ask God how best to help you portray the word message. You will preach to some people without even mentioning the verses. Dear God in heaven, God has been said, God has been shared. Oh, I pray that that person who will prepare this message may receive it. Oh, I pray, Father, that we live in the last days as we prepare God for the latter rain and the shaking, Lord, and the angel of Revelation 18 that calls us to come out of Babylon. Father, how I pray that your light be shining through us. How I pray, dear God, that each person in this place may become a people in light. That people may look at them and say, I want to go this person's God. That as they hear us sing, as they hear us pray for them, as they hear us do the simple things, Father, because you have told us, the right of Sister White, that it is only as we do or use the method of Christ, where we mingle with men and desire their God, that we can therefore win their confidence and tell them, come and follow Christ together. Father, how I pray that your spirit will answer the questions of the young person in this place. Who is asking, God, how can I show the world your love? How I pray that you may make us creative, Lord, to go out there and be like, this is what I want to do. Lord, bless my work. 
Bless us as we go out to see how best we can share what you have given us with others, so that they can see your goodness. Lord, it is, it is sad that we have not represented you fully in love. We thank you for the Father's Spirit that has led us. Teach us to surrender that we can give ourselves fully in this world. How I pray, mighty God, that your children will become a delight in this campus. That God, wherever they go, wherever they interact, wherever they sit, they may give happiness and joy. They may give hope. Lord, as they visit the sick, let them leave them with the hope of the world to come. As they visit those who are sad and depressed and lonely and guilty, Father, let them show them the love and grace of Jesus. Lord, as we pro 